So I'll get into the next question then. Um, from United King Dada and says, uh, absolutely adore this project. I've invested in and followed since the start. I've noticed over the last two weeks, there has been an undercurrent of discontent regarding the Cardano Foundation and its current involvement from industry spectators. Obviously, they are independent, but surely they have a voice concerning the roadmap, positively or negatively. We do not hear anything from the people that are employed within the foundation. Are there any reasons for this, or is it too early in the project for them to have a meaningful impact? Please comment. Yeah, that was kind of unfair about the Cardano Foundation is that Amergo had years to grow, and I had years to grow, and the product had years to grow. And, and we were showing up every day and watering those crops and watching them grow. Uh, and meanwhile, Michael Parsons was just dousing them in gasoline and setting them on fire and then pouring salt on the earth after after that happened. So, you know, we wake up three years later and I have this beautiful tree and Amergo has a tree and there's just barren earth, uh, salted earth uh, with the foundation. And it was really tragic. And we had to wait for it to get so egregious that there was real possibility of a regulatory event to remove Parsons from the foundation because he was blatantly violating the mandate uh, that the system was created with. So Amergo and IOHK, uh, you know, you know, you got a big kudos to Ken Kodama. You know, we took the chance to air the dirty laundry to the general public and say it has gotten to the point where there is no possibility of reconciliation. The policy is regime change. Uh, Parsons has to be removed and he has to be replaced with competent people who can retill the ground, remove the salt, remove the gasoline, remove all these things, and plant seeds that can eventually grow. The problem is that now that that process is underway, people tend to compare the foundation to my tree and Amergo's tree. I mean, Sebastian wakes up every day with Nico and a great team of people, and they build Seiza and Uroi, and they have wonderful things that they've done. They brought great products to market because these things were planned long time ago. And it took them a huge amount of effort to build these things out. So right now, the foundation is doing its best. It's cleared the ASA issues. It's cleared its audit issues. It's now a sustainable, stable organization. And it's actually just talking about stuff it should have talked about in 2017, in 2016. And they'll accelerate it. and They'll work super hard. But then again, we don't want to get into another Parsons situation. So what do you do? You have to only move as quickly as you can. So in the meantime, we've been picking up the slack. I was never in my contract given money to do community management. It's not my job. We were never given support contracts to run a help desk or talk to exchanges about how to integrate Cardano. It was not in the contract. But we do these things. And it costs me hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not millions of dollars, every single year to do these things because the foundation was not doing them. And we will continue to do these things at IOHK until the foundation's capable of taking them over. Uh, so, you know, their lack of progress frustrates me more than anything else, because uh, at the end of the day, that if, if I knew the way it was going to end up, we would have just done it at IOHK. And after it was all done, built an entity and transferred everybody over. The whole reason we had it done with a third party is that there are conflicts of interest for IOHK and Amerco doing these things. We should not be the voice for the community. We have a conflict of interest there. We're a for-profit private company. We should not be talking to exchanges about listing. Uh, that's a conflict of interest. There's a whole bunch of things we should not do that the foundation should be doing. And at some point they will do these things. Now I've seen real progress. I, I, you know, I've seen good seeds planted. There's a new executive director who will be coming on board soon. And I hope to meet with that person soon and, and talk about the roadmap and the strategy. But it is at some point reasonable to start holding the foundation accountable, demanding their own roadmap, demanding their own philosophy, demanding a well-diversified board, uh, demanding financial transparency and uh, demanding for them to do the things that they were brought in to do. Uh, I shouldn't be writing the CIP process. That's what's going to ultimately decentralize the ecosystem's development side. That should be the foundation's job. We'll do the initial version, but they'll become the custodian of it. And so we'll work as hard as we can. I know Amergo's working as hard as they can. We're in constant contact with Mindeet Singh and, uh, and Ken about these issues. And at some point in the future, uh, we'll see 
crops sprout up. And you know, in some cases, it's going to take the community's patience and community's time to water those crops and help them grow. At the end of the day, it's as much your foundation as it is mine, as it is other people. Its purpose is to be here for the Cardano uh, uh, ecosystem participant, whether they be a, uh, a person on the development side, or they be a regulator, or they be a, you know, uh, an infrastructure provider. The foundation's raison d'etre is to be your representative and help you. And it's only as good as the people who are watering those crops. And because it's stunted, we all need to start investing some resources and we all need to be a little bit patient with it. But you know, at the end of the day, sometimes it doesn't work. And you have to actually look at the arc of history in cryptocurrencies. Uh, Bitcoin Foundation was a miserable failure. Uh, it was rife with nepotism. It, it had misuse of funds. I think they had 15 million in funding. They spent all of it. Uh, they're hiring their friends and family. It was just a terrible situation. Meanwhile, Bitcoin went to $20,000 and changed the entire world, and I'm beating camel herders who own it. So while the Bitcoin Foundation didn't do its job, it was unnecessary for Bitcoin's ultimate success. So we view the Cardano Foundation ultimately as an accelerator and as a standardizer and as uh, a neutral referee to help the ecosystem along. But, you know, just like if you lose a kidney, you have another one to help you survive, and sometimes that kidney grows bigger and it just keeps you going. And Amergo and I, which, yeah, I think we're carrying a lot of weight. And uh, if the foundation ultimately is ineffective, it's a good case study of what can go wrong in governance. Uh, and if it is effective, then it's a good case study on how to reverse bad trends and purge bad behavior and turn it into an effective entity. But ultimately, I don't think it's going to be the deciding point whether Cardano as a project succeeds or fails. Um, I will tell this, one, one more point about that. Uh, Tezos... We never had a Tezos situation. You know, that they, they, the money was locked up. It was an existential threat to the project. There was never a moment in any, no matter how bad it got, that the foundation's lack of performance was an existential threat to the project. Mature people got together and they did the right thing, even when it cost them money uh, to do the right thing. And they and they would take arrows in their back and we got it done. And the, the scandal of the foundation was a non-scandal. There was no Reuters article or Wall Street Journal investigative journalist or, you know, uh, you know, daily issue and, and, and everybody's questioning whether the project's going to survive. And frankly, most people don't even think about it anymore. It's a closed matter. It's a closed issue. And we're just moving on. They're more frustrated that the foundation's supposed to be there for them and it's not doing the things that it's supposed to do. Like a small example, why should IOHK have to sponsor the Cardano effect? We love you guys. We love the work you do. But there is kind of a little bit of a conflict of interest with my entity giving you guys money. I mean, we put an organizational firewall and we don't tell you what to say and what to do. But just the mere perception of IOHK sponsoring this uh, this podcast could make people interpret that somehow there's some sort of secret you know, understanding we have. Whereas if the foundation had given you guys a grant to do this, it would be pure money and you'd be beyond reproach. So that's a small example of one of the things they should be doing that they're just currently not doing, and I hope that when the new executive director comes on board, some of the th things we can add on the agenda is a, a transfer of the guard of these types of things into that particular camp so that we can get uh, more peer funding, more diversity, and I can focus exclusively though on delivering Shelley and Goga because it's a hugely difficult job. David hasn't slept in months. And I think he came in as a 40-year-old guy now, when he's 65. <laughs> I have 75. You know. how, how old is your kid? How, how old is your daughter? She's like 18 months, 21. 19 months. What's that? 20, 20 months, 21 months. Oh, God, 20 months already, you know, and, and on a houseboat. I don't know how this guy does it. I, I would I would hang myself in the shower. So uh, <laughs> that, that's all That's all I'll say about the uh, the foundation in that respect. It's, it's one of the most frustrating moments of my life, and it's just a great example of what happens when greed and stupidity uh, undermine and damage good things that people are trying to do. That said, every good ecosystem has these issues. Bitcoin had Mt. Gox, it had Silk Road, and it's had dozens of other events, and it's still here. When you can survive the bad times and the bad events and the crises and come out at the other side stronger then oh, people have faith that this ecosystem is going to be here tomorrow. So I'd like to believe if there's any, uh, you know, kind of uh, light at the end of the tunnel for what's happened, it has indicated that 
when the bad event happens, the ecosystem's going to come together and it's going to solve this event one way or another. We'll that, uh, it creates the inevitability that Cardano is going to get where it needs to go. Yeah, and if I, if I can add to that also, uh, the CF is, is improving. It's not like, you know, it, it changed leaderships and then nothing really happened. And Nathan Kaiser, who's a chairperson, is going to a lot of conferences, a lot of countries, talking to a lot of governments and organizations. Uh, from the tech side, the ledger in integration to Cardano, although uh, Mergo did the implementation along with Vacuum Labs and IOHK, uh, the Cardano Foundation did play kind of an oversight role into the project, and that's why all the ledger uh, code that was written lives into, in the Cardano Foundation GitHub. Uh, the Cardano Foundation also helped uh, with some funding for CESA for some stuff we're going to be announcing in the future. And also when the, the whole CF stuff was happening, uh, mostly it was uh, Mergo and IOHK that's doing all the community management, uh, you know, on the Telegram, on the forums. Uh, but the CF recently hired uh, people from the community who have a, a huge depth of experience in managing these platforms, understanding what's going on. And I think they'll do a, a great job with the task they now have as a full-time job as opposed to, that, to as a volunteer. So the CF is is uh, ramping up its activities. We're on the right path, and we're moving forward. Yeah, I would I would echo that, Sebastian. I, uh, the, in terms of trajectory, I mean, I'm a newbie, but I meet with them regularly. Uh, we we accomplish things together. We're collaborating well. Uh, they're contributing and contributing more and more all the time, and so uh, it's headed in the in the right direction. Yeah, it will get there. Uh, I mean, uh, I am a bit harsh uh, because I just bad blood and bad experiences, but I, I have faith in Nathan and Domino and Minnie, and I do see improvements every single day. It's just hard because you're behind, you know, and uh, we've made mistakes too. We hired Sarah Kill to do Byron, and that didn't work out so well for us. And I, I have millions of dollars that I've had to spend, probably $10 million in, in development fees and lost time. Uh, to clean up that mistake. That's the cost I bear. And, uh, you know, it is what it is. Uh, so similarly, uh, you know, the foundation is where it's at. And there are very good people there who wake up every day and they want to do a good job. They want to be productive. They, they believe in the vision of Cardano. And they feel that uh, they can add value and contribute. It's just they're being held to very harsh standards because they're told that they have to run at 100 miles an hour when they when they have no means to do so, so by definition they're never going to measure up to that uh, to that unrealistic expectation. So I think the community does need to moderate a little bit, and what we need to do is is pick and choose our battles and focus with laser precision on certain things that need to get done over the next six months to twelve months. And I think we can accomplish those things, and then we can kind of hit a stride and build some pride. It was the same for Emergo, you know, before your Roy came along. There was many different things they were experimenting with, many different jurisdictions that they were in. And then Uroi came and it really focused the company. And it gave the company a clout and a, and a stride that just wasn't present there before. And it's a very different company to work with. And the employees are they're sometimes the very same people. They're different people to talk to and they're much more productive and effective. So the foundation needs some wins and the community needs to work with the foundation, help them get those wins, and then it'll get remoralized. And then over time, we'll see a lot of acceleration. And at some point, they'll they'll be effective, I hope. Uh, so uh, this new executive director has to lead. And um, I really hope that uh, this director is going to write a, a nice blog explaining who he is, where he comes from, his how he's going to help execute the vision. And I will have unlimited accessibility with that executive director to help that person along, as will David, as will all the people on our side explain the product and what we can and cannot do. I'm sure Emergo will have unlimited accessibility with him as well. Uh, and then uh, that person's job is to try to till that soil and get you know the, the, those crops growing double time. Uh, he'll be a, a bastion of a lot of criticism. But you know, uh, you know, Ethereum had its hard times too. Ming, uh, under her leadership, the relationship between consensus and the Ethereum Foundation uh, really soured, and it got so bad. I believe that the consensus couldn't even sponsor one of the dev cons, uh, and there, and it was just amazing. You know, you, you, your primary entity that's adding enormous value to your ecosystem somehow, some way, is viewed as an enemy of the project rather than a value add for the project. And those days are now just just gone. You know, the, the Ethereum looks back at them as, oh, those were the bad days. And now they're 
$30 million of investment in setting up labs and giving grants to all these people. And they have a clear articulated vision and they're under much better leadership. So that's an example of an organization that nearly went bankrupt that was alienating members of his community and just not really getting along and shedding off people. Like Gavin got pushed out and other people got pushed out. That has now turned the ship and it started to bring everybody back in to the extent where they even talk to the Ethereum Classic community and they try to find ways to, to work with them. Whereas that, that kind of dialogue was just even impossible 12 months ago. So um, anything could be turned around. And I do see a lot of evidence within the Cardano Foundation of it being turned around. Nathan Domino and Mead have very particular skills to help resolve the bad soil that Parsons left. But then there needs to be other people who are real farmers uh, who will come in and make sure that those fields produce good crops. And that just takes time. By the way, I live on a ranch and that's why I like these uh, these agricultural references. If I lived on a boat, I'd probably have a lot of nautical references. 